You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're gonna hit a good one and most of your playing partners are gonna struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are gonna share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. Now there is one single mistake that gives all recreational golfers I see extreme inconsistency, chunks and thin shots. I have a little station set up here and if I do this mistake, I'm gonna end up hitting this towel and getting a lot of chunks and thins. There we go, so we can see that would have been a big time chunk. The ball just kind of dribbles out there. It makes you wanna take your club and just snap it into a thousand little pieces. It's so frustrating chunking one. And then once you hit a couple of those chunks, we do the same motion with a little bit of adjustment. We start to stand up out of our posture slightly so we don't hit as much ground. And then we thin one and it's even worse, right? So let's talk about how we set this up and how this one drill can give you a ton of consistency. What I've done here is I've rolled a towel in half. I'll just set this on the ground like that. I don't want it to be too high there. So just rolling a, a thin towel like this, this is kind of the, the kind of towel they usually put in the back of your golf, or in your golf cart when you play around. So this is nice because you can use it, the same drill the way I have it set up here at most golf courses. Now I'm gonna put this golf ball about five to six inches in front of that towel. You see pros are having their club come down. It would miss this towel. My weight is getting to my left. I'm driving some pressure into my left foot and my left knee, and I'm hitting down on this golf ball slightly. So I'd be missing this towel, hitting the ground and the golf ball roughly at the same time. And then the bottom of my divot would be about four inches in front of the golf ball. So I kind of mark that with this T. If you're doing this on turf, I should see that exact same thing. I should see missing the towel, hitting the golf ball, a divot from the front of the golf ball all the way up through here, and that would be what the pros are doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wrong way to doing this, what I just showed. Most players, what ends up happening is we throw the club to release the club with our arms. This means that the club shaft will be straight up and down at impact, and my arms will be releasing at my body. Now you can tell you're doing this if you tend to stand up out of your posture. So if in the downswing, your hips move toward the golf ball and your upper body goes back away from the golf ball, you're doing this move that I'm talking about. Now the problem with that is, that puts your low point slightly behind the golf ball. Because I'm throwing at the golf ball, my club gets straight up and down just behind the golf ball. So if I imagine this is a hula hoop, this is the, the arc of my swing. So my club comes down and then goes back up the low point would be just behind the golf ball like that. Now that low point would be the bottom of your divot. Remember I said pros have the bottom of their divot at this tee up here, four inches in front. We're having our divot back here slightly behind the golf ball. So that means that if I hit down and take a divot, this would be the bottom of my divot and it would be a massive chunk like we saw in the last one. I would be hitting this towel when that's happening. Now you say, okay, I don't like chunking it. That's a pain in the butt. I don't want to do that again. So now we start to raise up out of that shot slightly, and all we're doing is pulling our hula hoop higher. So the bottom of the divot is still behind it, but now we're missing the ground, and we're gonna thin the ball most times. Now, if I have the ball setting up in a little bit of grass, I can go ahead and make that higher like that. I can hit some grass behind the golf ball and still hit it fairly clean, but the problem is the lie has to be perfect. Anytime we're not on a perfect lie, it's a disaster. So all of these inconsistencies are coming from having that low point behind, and then we adjust it up, we thin it. We adjust it down, we chunk it. Up, down, up, down, very inconsistent. I have to get the low point of my swing up here, like the pros have it, four inches in front of that golf ball, that has to be the low point of my swing. That's exactly what we're gonna do in this drill. So step one, towel rolled over once, it's a thin towel. If you have a thicker towel, just put it in there once, or roll, don't even roll it over four to six inches, or five to six inches behind the golf ball. The width of a club head is about four inches, most club heads. Now the first move we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start to shift my weight to the left as I'm still making a backswing. So we're gonna do a little practice swing like this. Go to here, and then I want you to feel like you get your weight to the left, and then swing down. That looks like this. As I make my backswing, I'm gonna go to about right here. I'm gonna let my left knee kick out like that, so if I have a an arrow shooting out of my knee, it's starting to get some pressure in my left knee, and my left knee is turned out. It doesn't look like this. 
on my downswing of my knees like that, I'm not gonna be able to get my weight on the left. I wanna kick that leg out to start my downswing, put pressure in the left leg, and then I swing through. So we're gonna make a few small swings doing that, and then we're gonna, we're gonna build from there. So this is a little half swing, probably only gonna hit it barely over 100 yards. Yeah, this little small swing. It's showing it fast on the screen today. I have no idea why that's happening. I actually had pretty good club head speed there, even though I don't feel like I was swinging very hard. And with the six iron, that still went 188 yards. So to me, that felt like I was barely swinging, but because my technique was good, I had a lot of speed and I was able to contact that ball fairly solidly. That's piece number one. Get the knee out, weight left, then you swing down. I don't wanna throw my weight back as I'm swinging down. Weight goes left first, that's the first move. Weight's left, then I make my downswing. Now, piece number two, I'm gonna go ahead and let my right leg kick forward. So here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna let my kneecap come toward, imagine a, a, there was a ball about a foot in front of the golf ball that I'm hitting. My kneecap goes toward that golf ball. So here's how we're gonna do this. Little back swing, shift left. As I swing down, that kneecap goes toward that golf ball, and then I hit the golf ball here. So we're gonna practice it like this. Make a little back swing, get your weight left as your left arm's about parallel with the ground. Pause there, go to impact, and let this knee kick forward like that. Your heel should be coming up off the ground, and that's gonna get it to where you can hit down and through this golf ball. Now, if you wanna go a little fancier than that, we can get rid of the towel, and we can put down what's called the speed trap by iLine Golf. I do get a little commission if you buy, somewhere on this page you'll see a link to this. If you don't have to buy this, just use the towel if you want to. But if you want to get nicer than that, use this speed trap. On here, there's three marks, a chipping, a pitching, and a full swing. I actually have found the pros are more along the lines of this red chipping one. So put the golf ball where that red line is there. And now that's that four to six inches, or five to six inches behind it is where this plexiglass stands there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my weight left. My knee kicks forward. I'm doing these practice reps to feel where that is. And then I'm letting my arms go long through the shot. So let me go ahead and try to make a little half swing again, doing that drill. There we go, hit that one fantastic. 200 yards total distance. Again, that's after roll, but man, that felt really solid and I missed this board. If I start to do this stand up and fall back, you can hear it hit this board. Right, I had a big thud on there. I actually can see a little bit of um, area here where it's scuffed up right there just behind the golf ball. And I know my low point is way too far back. Now finally, there's one drill that really brings this home. And I found a lot of people have a tough time getting off that right foot. If you're having your divot too far back, you're oftentimes falling on that right foot and all the pressure's on the right foot in the downswing. What we're gonna do for that is go ahead and bring this towel out again. Again, you can do all this with the towel. You don't even have to have this speed trap here, but it makes it a little bit easier to not have to move the towel around every time. But I'm gonna roll this towel up a few times, get it nice and thick like this, and I'm gonna put it under the outside of my right toe. So what I'm trying to do here is on my backswing, I'm gonna load into that, and then I'm gonna push off of that in my downswing, get my weight going to the left. What I don't wanna have happen is if you're looking at my right foot, I don't wanna to sway to the outside of that, get this reverse pivot, and then I stand up and throw it rather than getting to the left. If I do this motion, it's almost impossible to get back to the left and hit down and through. So this towel under my right foot like that is gonna help me to push off of it and I never roll to the outside of my foot. When I'm setting up like this with this towel, it feels like it's almost impossible that I could hit this plexiglass glass back there. It feels like I'm gonna to have to get that divot down and through the golf ball. There we go, and hit that one great. Right down the middle, 210. <laughs> All right, so we got Michael Durr, one of our Top Speed Golf certified instructors here, having a little bit of fun there. But we have this uh, divot board and we're gonna talk about one of the reasons you don't wanna fall back, one of them being that you're gonna hit 12 inches behind the golf ball. And that's actually what happens. So go ahead and demonstrate kind of falling back there a little bit, coming through impact. Your weight ends up going this way, 
And what it does is it makes your low point way back here behind the golf ball. Then the club starts to either chunk into the ground and you hit it 10 feet like you did there, or if you save it, if you're a good athlete, you'll save that, kind of push the club far forward as you can, and you're gonna hit it slightly thin. So if you're used to chunking and thinning, this could be the root cause, the culprit on this. So now let's go ahead and do a couple drills to get you moving your weight forward, hitting down and through it every single time. And one of the ones that I really like a lot is just this little squishy golf ball. Or it's, a, it's not a golf ball, it's like a little weighted ball. I don't even know where it's from. I got it from Academy Sports or something like that. You can use a rolled up towel. You can use a regular golf ball, whatever you want to do. Let's actually not worry about hitting the golf ball yet. Let's just do a couple of practice swings. And what I want Michael to do here is put it under the outside of his toe. You'll notice how that kind of angles his right foot inward. Now, when you make your back swing, if you have a reverse pivot, go ahead and move the ball and show him the wrong way here first. You're gonna slide those hips and notice how the outside of the foot starts to roll out like that. So we both see this all the time, every single day. That gets you in this reverse pivot type motion and then you end up falling back the other way in the downswing. Go ahead and put that ball under your foot there again. And now that his foot is angled forward, go ahead and make your backswing real slow. You'll notice how that right hip stays in when he does that. It's not sliding over here like this and getting the reverse pivot. So this angle helps that hip to stay in. It also helps him to feel like where that, that ball is kind of higher on the right side, it's almost like rolling downhill. As you start your downswing, you're gonna be getting that weight shift to the left. And here's a big key. For people that fall back, as soon as they start their downswing, they start to push off that left leg and their body starts to fall to the right. So show them the wrong way here again to where as soon as he starts down, his, right, his left leg is going to extend early and then he's going to fall back on his right side. So you'll see how he's just falling back. It's going to get that divot behind the golf ball again. So what I want Michael to do here on the second part of this drill after we've worked on a few swings with the ball is he's going to get a little weight shift to the left and feel like you're moving downhill, almost like there's a mountain slope here. I'm moving into my left side and this knee flexes as I start my downswing. So go ahead and just do that and kind of pause halfway down. You can see how he's got his weight shift going to the left. This knee is flexing as that's happening and that allows him to stay in his posture. If you're looking from the down the line view, notice how he's not coming up out of his posture here. He's staying down and covering this golf ball. And then from there, all you gotta do is just go ahead. Then you let the leg extend and come onto a good full finish. Perfect there. Now notice how in the finish, left ankle, left hip, left shoulder or, or middle of the shoulders, all stacked up. You feel like you could kind of just stand there and talk to somebody if you wanted to, just perfectly stacked and balanced over that lead foot. So let's do a few more now, recapping on it. Ball under the outside of the right foot as you make your backswing that keeps you away from that reverse pivot. As you start down, get the weight shifting to the left, get the knee coming down, and then you can go ahead and post up in that left side and make a good full finish. If you do that, then it's gonna get this divot in front. Now we started off this video with this training aid called the divot board. This thing's really cool. Go ahead and make a good swing now and show them what the divot board is supposed to look like. There we go. Love that one. That thing smoked. Michael's got awesome club heads, but you see his 99.6. Is that a six iron? Yeah. What club's that? Yeah, so 211 carry, 226. I can't promise you're gonna get those results, but that was pretty daggone good. So when I'm looking at this divot board now, this is the cool thing about this. When he fell back, he started turning over these sequins back here at the back of the board. That's that scooping up on it. We're not gonna do very good if we're doing that. You notice on this second one, the golf ball sits here on that yellow dot. And anything that starts at the middle of this golf ball to about an inch behind it is perfect. That's your perfect divot that's gonna be cleanly struck. And that's just because you have to hit a little grass right as you're coming in the golf ball. If I get too far, like toward the front end of this golf ball or farther forward, my divot starts, it's gonna be a little thin. If I get any farther than an inch behind it, it's gonna be a little bit heavy. So we can sit here and hit shots all day long and just make this in our living room the right kind of movement. So now, go ahead and try one out. Make a couple swings here, just without a ball, like if somebody was in the living room. Get rid of the golf ball under your feet. We're gonna make a normal swing and just try these same ideas. Let's go ahead and see what the divot looks like. There we go. So that one was really good. You can see again, this divot board, if I'm turning it this way, it's starting right at the, the back of the golf ball. 
Now he would have hit that one slightly toward the heel, kind of a little off the heel spot of the, of the sweet spot. And that's what's so cool about this. You can see, if you're just practicing with this training aid, you can see if you're looking from down the line here, are you swinging inside out? Are you swinging outside in? Are we hitting the divot in front, divot behind? All those things you can tell right here from this. Even if you're hitting off the heel or you're hitting off the toe like that. So a lot of cool stuff you can tell just from this one training aid. If you're hitting fat shots, the majority of the problem is coming from your weight shift. Now most people I see get to the right way too late in the backswing. And then in turn, they get back to their left way too late, or even worse, they're falling to their right in their backswing. So I actually made this little device. And heads up, I'm not trying to sell you anything. This isn't even for sale. I just went to Home Depot and made this to kind of illustrate this point. And I'll go over exactly what I'm talking about here. But basically it's just a, a foot wide, half inch, three quarter inch thick piece of oak. And then I put about three quarters of an inch of a little piece in the middle that I, that I screwed on there so that it's kind of like a teeter-totter and it'll go back and forth. I also put these uh, foot pegs on there, which I'll get to here in a second. But I think this does a great job of illustrating the proper weight shift in the golf swing. Now, what I see most people do is I see most people, if I start with the weight on the left, and this is what I want to be when I'm at impact. So if, I wanna, if I'm going to hit fat shots, a lot of times my weight would be on my right and I'm grounding out behind this golf ball. Now, if I happen to miss the ground, I'm coming in so shallow, I might even be hitting up into the golf ball and I'll thin it. So not only are you gonna hit fat shots, but to add insult to injury, you're also gonna hit more thin shots if you do it that way. Where I see most people go wrong is if we start with our weight on the left side of this teeter-totter, what I see people do is they keep their weight left way too long, and then it's almost the end of the backswing or the start of the downswing before they get it to the right, and two things happen. Either you fall back and you never get it to the left like we're talking about. That's the heavy and thin shots like we talked about there or you do get it to the right and then it's so late in the downswing you really don't have time to get back to the left and it feels like your arms and your body are completely out of sync like your weight shift and your golf swing just aren't working at all well here's the proper way to do that i'm going to start with my weight a little bit more on the left side just to to show you when i'm shifting to the right and what i'm actually going to do is when i feel my weight start to shift is actually before the swing you'll even notice if you pay attention to my left toe it almost pops up off the ground a little bit before I make my backswing. So you'll see me as a trigger lift up my left toe and that's when I'm getting my weight to start shifting to the right. So my weight is all the way to the right when I'm about here. So I almost feel like it's, it goes to the right before I even start my swing. Almost like I'm doing this and then starting my swing. So it goes right and then my backswing starts. Same thing in the downswing. I see players getting to the left way too late and completely out of sync. So I'm getting to the right early, and then I wanna start shifting to the left about here. And that's what's gonna allow me to hit crisp shots, get the divot in front of the golf ball. I'm gonna have my weight shift to the left. As I'm starting my downswing, I should already have most of my weight on my left foot. And then I'm really pressing it into the ground. So in slow motion, it looks like this. A shift to the right, then I'm going to the left. My weight gets left and then I swing down. So this teeter-totter back to the left actually begins about right here and it ends with me having feeling pressure in my left foot when I'm this early in my downswing. If I don't have my weight in my left foot at this point when my left arm is parallel to the ground, everything else happens so fast that I can never catch up with it. So if you notice in these swings that I'm taking here, look how halfway in my backswing or, or let's start with the beginning there. Very early in my backswing, I lift my left toe and my weight gets right. And then notice how about halfway in my backswing, my weight actually begins to stop shifting right and start shifting to the left. And once my left arm is parallel to the ground in the downswing, I already have a good amount of weight in the left. I feel a lot of pressure into my left foot. So long story short, here's the way you wanna feel this. You wanna feel like the teeter-totter goes to the right then you start your backswing. When your left arm gets parallel, you wanna feel like the teeter-totter goes to the left, and then that you're gonna feel like you have all the pressure on the left side of this left foot, left side of the teeter-totter when your left arm is parallel to the ground in the downswing. That's gonna set you up to where you can hit down and through this golf ball, get that divot in front every single time. Now there's a couple other drills that you can do with this to get the rhythm of this with or without this board. I'm gonna do one with it and one without it. Now, 
I put these rails on the side here to help me from sliding my hips. What I don't want to do, if this was a flat board, as I shift to the right, my foot would be kind of angled down. And I see a lot of people when they do that, slide their hip way out here like this. I don't want that to happen. I want to have this angled in, so I'm shifting my weight, but you see that this right leg is staying angled in. I'm never doing this motion. Same thing with the left. I have that angled in to where when I get the weight there, I'm not sliding way out in front of it. I'm putting pressure there, but my hip never gets in front of my left ankle until all the way in the follow through. That's why those angled pieces are there. I can also do this where I feel like I get a weight shift to the right. I imagine that this is my impact. I get a weight shift to the right. I start left and I wanna feel like I put pressure in the board and then the momentum of my hand is hitting through contact. That's gonna look something like this. So I'm letting that, I'm letting that teeter-totter get the momentum of my body moving left, that divot in front, getting rid of all those heavy chunk shots and thin shots, and then I'm delivering the hit. So it's like weight goes left, then I deliver the hit. That gets your, your strike in front of the ball every single time. And you'll notice that when you're watching video of my swing, I definitely get the majority of that pressure in my left foot before I swing down. Now finally, there's a drill that you can do without any of these boards, and you can do all those without a board too, just feeling that in your feet. That just makes it a better visual for a video. But I wanna do a little heel lift drill. So what I'm gonna do is in my backswing, I'm gonna lift my heel up, my left heel about an inch. That ensures that my weight is getting to the, to the right. Then I wanna press that heel into the ground and then hit the golf ball. Now in my real swing, I actually do that. When I'm hitting a driver, I lift my left heel and then I plant my left heel and swing through. So if you're watching a driver swing of mine, you'll see that early in the backswing, my toe lifts up, my weight goes right. As I complete the backswing, my, toe, my heel is off the ground and then I put that heel back down and that heel is down about halfway in my downswing. My weight is starting to get there. I press into the left side and then I swing on through. So it's feeling like that teeter-totter. The teeter-totter goes right for your backswing, the teeter-totter shifts left, and then you start your downswing, and that can really help you to get the proper weight shift. Now there's a second piece of this, if you wanna hit it with any kind of power. This is gonna get you hitting it clean. You're gonna get your weight shift left, you're gonna get that divot in front, you're gonna hit it really solid. You follow those drills, you're gonna make a lot more clean contact. But if you wanna hit it with some power, you have to add in the rotation piece. I gotta make sure that my shoulders and my hips really turn as I go into the backswing. If I just kind of shift right and shift left, don't get very much rotation, then I'm gonna hit it okay. I'm gonna hit it fairly solid. I'm gonna hit it fairly decent distance, but I'm losing out on 30 or 40 yards off the tee that I have trapped inside of me. If I can do that same right to left, but I can add in a hip turn and a shoulder turn. And it's very important to know the right ways to do this. And there's actually some secrets with the left heel and specifically how you turn those hips that allows you to get this big turn, even if you're stiff as a board and you feel like you can't move at all. I have a bonus video that's gonna show you exactly how to do that. When you add that turn, you add power to this weight shift. So you're adding speed to the divot in front and that clean contact, and that's when you're gonna play some really good golf. Now I'm gonna play a preview of that video where I share some of these secrets with you. You're gonna go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen somewhere here. If you don't see one of those cards, don't worry about that. Go down to the description below, click the link there, and you'll get instant access to that video where I talk about how to properly turn the body to get a whole heck of a lot of speed. Best of luck, and I'll see you there. Most of the instruction out there today is killing you of your power. The things that they're telling you to do can make you hit it shorter, and worse than that, not even any more consistent. I'm gonna go over some of the real secrets to powerful, consistent golf in this video. Let's go and get started. So here's some of the keys into making that happen. If you wanna incorporate this in your swing, let me break it down exactly what you should do. Number one, let's focus on the belt buckle. This is another big misconception. I wanna keep that belt buckle facing the ball so I can really stretch out my midsection and really get loaded up. I'm not a big fan of that. That's really gonna kill your distance. In your backswing, I wanna feel like that belt buckle rotates to the right and you really let your hips and legs be loose. Notice how my legs are moving here. I'm not trying to keep those rigid and tight or I'm really just taking all the speed out of my swing. 
All right, so on that one, I really felt like I let my belt buckle rotate back. And a good key to this is feel like your knees are loose. Feel like when you make your back swing. Piece number two, let's go ahead and rotate our shoulders. When I let my lower body rotate, my upper body can rotate a lot better also. So if I let my hips move, my shoulders will move more. So here, once I've got my hips working well, I'm gonna add to that my shoulders making a big rotation. On average, on the PGA Tour, players are getting about 120 degrees of shoulder rotation. I don't see hardly anybody getting less than 90 degrees. So it starts with the hips, knees nice and loose, allow the belt buckle to rotate, and then from there, so those are two really big keys. But here's the truth. There's one thing, and if you don't do this correctly, nothing else is gonna work.